Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Okay. My viewers will love to know who you are. I'm the councillor for Old Bako Cape on Ward. Elected councillor. Yes, my name is Lamin Diva. Uh, okay. Uh, we want to know what your ward is doing, uh, what you are doing personally for your ward. Anyway, my ward, you know, definitely is uh, our training is our main problem. Last year we um, embarked on training, digging exercise, that's distilling the drainage. You know, we don't experience that much flood, but this year, you know, I was not able to do that because of the financial constraint we have. And at the same time, again, you know, you know, we are. I'm doing very much for my for my wards because mm -hmm. I'm just recently I'm coming from Farokono to see to assess the situation there, and we found out that most of those guys have lost their valuable material because of the rain. Because of the rain, all right. But that one is natural because the whole of KMC has been flooded. Mm -hmm. So it's not only my ward, but the whole of KMC has been flooded. Even me as a councillor. I have never experienced any flood in my own house, but this time it has it has happened. Mm -hmm. But people are my concern. That is why I have to go and see with them. Even I cannot do anything, but at least I sympathize with them. Mm -hmm. And this is what I have, do, uh, I have been doing. And um, even today, that's why I have gone with the National Disaster Management personnel to go and do the assessment to see, uh, you know, what materials and so on, what they can do for those victims. Okay. It is not just your words, as you said. There are many words uh, within the KMC uh, that are affected with uh, this by disaster, most especially rain. So we want to know what are some of the things your municipality is doing to compensate those people? All right. You know, the municipality, we have National Disaster Management Office in our in, in municipality. Mm -hmm. So they will do the assessment and then uh, at least we have located some budget for them. So that when something is happen, or that, that budget also will be given to national disaster to buy food stops and other things, so that at least those who are the victims they can give it to them. All right, and then the activities also I'm embarking on because most of our roads have been eroded. If in some we can the cars and the vehicle cannot have access to most, especially Kachikali and then Farokono. Now I list with the National Road Authority. Mm -hmm. Alright, this National Road Authority, they are rehabilitating some of the roads in our area. Mm -hmm. Though, you know, it's not that much standard, but at least to make it motorable. Like, if you look at the Johnson down, the Johnson down there, towards my own area here, mm -hmm. that one is completely cut off. The whole community has been cut off from the, from the, from the rest. Mm -hmm. So now, I went to National Disaster Management yesterday. I was with their director, and we come around to see what they can able to do for, 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 my, for my people. Mm -hmm. Now, they decided now, this road from the Johnson to here, I think they will put those some stones there and then make it compact so that it can be motorable for, for, for our people. Mm -hmm. All right. Sancheva also benefited from such a uh, gesture because I've been complaining that they have been in my own world here, but what they are doing for, for us here is too, is too little. Mm -hmm. So this time they have to come to our age and now they are, they are on it now. Okay. Yes. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Can you tell us who you are, please? Um, my name is Bubakar Fofana. Mm -hmm. I am the Municipal Disaster Management Coordinator for, for the Carnifin Municipality. Okay, thank you. Uh, could you tell us what is the role of uh, the disease, uh, min Municipal Disaster Management Coordinator? Um, uh, NDMA as an agency have decentralized, which means that we have uh, offices all over the country. Uh, in each of the local government area. So the local government area of Carnifin municipality, I am the officer in charge of the Carnifin municipality and I have uh, some staff under me and there are other people that I also work with, partners and stakeholders. Okay, what do you do for the people, sir? Um, my uh, responsibility here is that I represent uh, the executive director in the municipality here. I am also responsible of the day-to-day -day running of the disaster management office and as part of my job um, I involve uh, in coordination of disaster management activities you know in the region because it's not only NDMA that work in the area of uh, disaster management. Um, we also have some partners and uh, NGOs or other stakeholders who also you know, do some activities in the area of disaster management. So there is a need for an office that will coordinate the 
activities of all actors. So that's why the agency has established offices in all the regions and municipalities so that that office at that level will be responsible of managing or coordination of disaster management and also work with partners. Uh, thank you, sir. Currently, we have many towns and wards that are affected by the heavy rain that happened just recently. What are some of the strategies your, uh, your municipality is putting in place to compensate those affected victims? Um, actually, as you rightly said, um, uh, these days we are uh, experiencing heavy downpour of rain. Mm -hmm. And then when that happens, normally our first uh, response is to go out and see for ourselves what has happened. And during that process, we have data collectors who normally collect data. This data help us to know the magnitude of the disaster, mm -hmm. and it also help the authorities to make informed decision. So it's not like um, what do you expect from us to compensate. No, compensation, we do not do compensation as at now. Mm -hmm. What we do is call emergency response. When people are affected, you know, normally, you know, their livelihood are affected, mm -hmm. uh, their properties are affected, and all other things that belongs to them. So, in the case of flooding, uh, if a water enter in somebody's compound and the whole compound is inundated, obviously, uh, there is likelihood that the food items that are in the household may be spoiled mm -hmm. as a result of the rainwater that entered in the in the compound. Mm -hmm. So in that kind of situation, um, those type of people need urgent support in terms of food. So that's why NDMA usually felt it necessary to give um, uh, those kind of response. That is to say to buy some food items to give it to disaster victims so that uh, they can help themselves, you know, within those days. Uh, in order to uh, take care of their other businesses. Okay. We have conducted an interview with some of the disaster affected uh, victims in Bakau Farukona. They have told us that the National Disaster Management Team always visit their site, but they have seen no improvement at all. What, what assurance will you give to those families? Um, actually, the agency, that is the National Disaster Management Agency, mm -hmm is working with uh, Bakao people. Mm -hmm. uh, before the rains, you know, NDMA was working with the Alcalo, the Cancillo, and so many drainage cleaning exercises have been conducted mm -hmm. in, in Bakao. Mm -hmm. The purpose of conducting those drainage cleaning exercises is that to minimize flooding in Bakao. Mm -hmm. You know, if drains are blocked, when water comes, it cannot flow through the drain. So. You know, that's why we have embarked on those exercises uh, together with other partners. So um, I will be surprised if they said NDMA is not doing anything in Bacau. We are doing something there. Um, the issue of uh, 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 respond, mm -hmm. you know, is wide. Sometimes people' expectations, you know, differ, mm -hmm. and for NDMA people should understand that we are also constrained in terms of resources, particularly financial resources. So when people are affected, sometimes they normally think that NDMA will come immediately and then construct drainages there, you know, so that flooding will not affect them anymore. But NDMA as an agency, we work with partners. We don't have the adequate resources to be able to do those kind of work at the moment. So what we do is uh, we are still uh, you know, working with partners and we are doing whatever little that we can do to mitigate disasters in, in those areas and, and we will continue to do that as far as we exist. So let uh, people have patience and also I'm giving advice to people, let them know where to settle. Because if you go to these areas, most of the places that are usually flooded, if you um, look at the area critically, mm -hmm. uh, many a times there are areas 
that we are not meant for settlement. People went there, settled there without consulting uh, 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 proper authorities or without following due process. Mm -hmm. They just go and settle there. Okay, we went to Farokono. Uh, the problem is some of the, the compounds that we went to, uh, there were so many water, there were too much water uh, in the compound. So it's th th that means that definitely it's, it, it is a no-go uh, no area for people to settle in. So I think that is definitely a point. So, sir, we want to know some of the measures that your uh, municipality as a disaster management team is taking to ensure that uh, such things doesn't happen again. You know, as far as that is concerned, you know, uh, uh, that has a lot of um, issues that NDMA alone cannot address. Mm -hmm. Because when it comes to uh, settlement issues, you have other players that are also involved in it. So, but what um, we will advise people is that anytime they want to settle in a particular place, before they settle there, let them try to consult the relevant authorities mm -hmm. so that they have advice from them whether that place can be a resident or it cannot be a resident. This will help a lot. If we try to adhere to this advice, it will help a lot. Otherwise, if we settle in those areas and there is heavy downpour of rain, what normally happens is that some people where they settle, they don't know that they are blocking waterways. Mm -hmm. So if you block a waterway, when a water comes, obviously it will find its own way. And during that process, it may take a wrong way. It may enter in somebody's compound and do a lot of uh, destruction there. So therefore, there is a need for us to always adhere to um, settlement rules and regulations to avoid such. Okay. What would be your final word to the people? My final word is that, you know, let us know where to settle. Mm -hmm. Because since this rain started, or this flooding started, I have visited so many places. But as I told you, you know, most of the places are not meant for settlement. They were wetlands or they were uh, furrows, you know. So those, actually those type of places, everybody knows that are not places for settlement. Even if the place should be a settlement, they should be developed before people settle there. Either maybe by backfilling the place or whatsoever. But it will develop in a such, such a way that you know, people can settle there. But once that is not done, and people just go there, settle there without consulting uh, or, or following due process, it will always bring a problem. And you see right now, those people are settling there. If, so if you talk to them about relocation, they normally don't want to hear that. Mm -hmm. you know? And relocation is not an easy thing. It will cost you know, the government a lot of money. So before we go into all that, let us adhere to advices from the relevant authorities.